Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke consultant, Michael, and joined again by Crash the Wonderbird. So, had a bit of an epiphany um, over the past weekish or so. So, cold's getting better, so I'm going to sound a little bit better, be a bit motivated, not as medicated. Um, had a bit of an epiphany, um, kind of a, a breakthrough in a way. Um, about self-compassion and self-validation. So, a lot of us that have been through the very traumatic experience of a brain injury, be it from a stroke, be it from a concussion, an accident, what have you, uh, in, my, in my case, a stroke, in certain instances, depending on kind of how things happened uh, and some of the outcomes, sort of the, the comments, the conduct, um, the attitudes and behaviors of others, you can be robbed of a sense of validation. You can be robbed of a sense of um, compassion. And, and that ends up translating into you don't have a lot of self-compassion. You don't have a lot of self-validation. Well, I've been through an experience over the last week, week and a half, where I've had to retell my story yet again. And that's one of the things we kind of forget about. We, we have to retell our story so many times to the neurologist and then a doctor and then a nurse and then another doctor and then another nurse and then a social worker and then this person and that person. So you end up retelling your story many times. And sometimes when you try to retell your story, people just don't get it. Or you tell them your story and then they say things like, oh, we're here to help. And then they start either erecting barriers or shutting doors. And in my case, and I'm not going to go into specifics, um, mainly because I can't. And I don't say that to be difficult. It's just I have some legal situations that are happening in my world that I'm not allowed to talk about. So, um, I've finally been able to retell my story in a fashion and a manner which has been validating. I've been able to retell my story in a manner that actually takes into account and can properly explain away everything that happened. Now, it can't explain the comments, the conduct, the attitude, and the behavior of others, because that, that at some point becomes irrelevant, right? That, that a point, at that point, it has to become, you can't control those things. But I've been able to rationalize it. I've been able to do it in such a way that it's not vicariously triggering my PTSD or vicariously triggering negative thoughts or vicariously triggering anything that would put me in a form of crisis or anything that would put me in like in a down state. I've been able to do this over a series of days um, and be able to retell my story to the point where the meaning that my story had for the longest time had been kind of washed away. This can't wash it away. There, there's, there's no one doing this. Um, the retelling of my story in such a way that it'll finally get The only word I can use is official recognition, right? So that's part of the problem after having a stroke or a brain injury, concussion, whatever, right? You, you, you've had one of the most traumatic events that you could ever potentially have in your world that's had some drastic lifelong outcomes. And some of those outcomes are highly episodic, highly situational, very invisible, but can be very detrimental, right? Um, so one of the things 
I've learned due to therapy is, is what's called a balancing thought, right? So for a while there, I was having difficulty re re resolving the fact that I had a stroke. But then I hear stories of five-year-olds having strokes or like neonates having a stroke. Like you're born and four hours later, you're throwing a stroke. Well, a four-year-old, unless it's already lived a really unhealthy lifestyle, hasn't smoked over a, you know, um, have high cholesterol, is morbidly obese, has, you know, so there's many complex reasons why you could have a stroke or the fact that you were skiing and got a concussion. Well, everybody goes skiing. You just happen to have that one really unlucky day. So I've, I've been able to balance out some of what has been happening to, with, and around me and, and realize that I've never been given the opportunity to properly tell my story because people are only worried about their little piece um, or they hear so much of it and they're like, well, I don't need to hear the rest of it. I'm like, well, I think you do, but you don't think you do. So, and I've gotten to the point where I realized that all the Everything that's happened since the day I had my stroke until today, or a couple days ago, not my fault. There's, I may have been able to do a few things differently. I may have been able to do a few things more, more effectively, but ultimately I'm not in control. Like I can only control the immediate space around me. You can only control the immediate space around you. He can barely control himself, right? So you 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 have limited ability to impact, I mean directly impact <clears throat> the behavior of others. You have you have very limited impact on the comments of others, the conduct of others, the attitudes of others. Right? Unless you work in a very controlled environment. Right? Such as, you know, a job where your boss can technically actually order you to do things. You know, like you work in, you know, police, fire, corrections, EMS, the military. You work in a job where your boss can actually, quote unquote, give you an order you can't ignore. <clears throat> um, you know, without some significant consequences. Um you can't really influence the behavior of others, right? Um, you can't really influence the conduct of others. You can't influence the attitudes of others. You, know, you can't influence anything about anyone else. And I've come to realize that, that the fact that I had a stroke, not my fault. Right? The fact that anyone could have a stroke, that's the balancing thought. You know, the fact that I smoked, isn't necessarily the cause of my stroke. It, it could be a contributory factor, but they really don't know. That was a guess of a doctor in an emergency room. The fact that maybe I'm a little bit overweight, had a couple extra pounds, and I mean like maybe 10 extra pounds, could have contributed to my stroke? Maybe not. They really don't know. That was an opinion of a doctor in an emergency room. Uh, the fact that I wasn't eating the most healthily, right? You know, could have contributed to the stroke, but maybe not. That was the opinion of a doctor in an emergency room. So I took all of his opinions right, and, and created what's called a, uh, a manufactured event, right? It wasn't real to me. It was something, information I was given, and that's because it, it wasn't created by me. It was manufactured externally for me. Um, I, I took that as, as the gospel, you know. Well, yes, I smoked. They can't prove that caused my stroke. Yes, had a few extra pounds. They can't prove that caused my stroke. Yes, wasn't going to the gym as often as I could. That could have caused my stroke, but they can't prove that. Yes, maybe I was eating at McDonald's one too many times in a month. But again, they can't prove that's what caused my stroke. Until they can actually get a hold of my brain at the time of my death 
and during the postmortem do the examination. They're never, and even then, they may never know what caused my stroke. So, you had a stroke. Okay. Anyone can have a stroke. Unless you intentionally set about on a series of really bad decisions and some adult irresponsibilities to actually go out and physically harm yourself. It's not your fault you had a stroke. You went skiing and had a concussion. Okay, you fell while skiing. Everybody can fall while skiing. Five-year-olds can fall while skiing. 35-year-olds can fall while skiing. 75-year-olds can fall from skiing. Anyone can fall from skiing. You just happen to happen to have that unlucky accident. You, know, you just happen to have a series of events you could not have predicted, you attempted to control to the best of your ability, and something bad happened. You know, you had an accident. You know, again, you cannot control everything around you. So you have to give yourself a little bit of self-compassion. The days when you're struggling, you probably don't know you're struggling that day until months later, right? Because you've gone to therapy, you've seen a counselor, you've, you know, you've done something to help clear the cloud of what was emotion, what was fact, what was thought, what was feeling, you know. And, and, and it's a, a revelation that's actually been um, um, lightning, like like enlightening. You know, it, it's 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 lifted a weight that I might have been carrying around, and it, it's made it easier just to resolve some of what. I've gone through post-stroke, you know, and I know what I'm saying may be difficult for some, and I appreciate that, because if you were to try to have this conversation with me a year ago, yeah, it probably wouldn't have gone well. So, everybody's journey is different. The reason why everybody started their journey after a brain injury is different. Stroke, concussion, accident, brain injury, um, aneurysm, surgical accident, whatever. You've had a brain injury. In my case is a stroke. Right? Whatever caused you down the road of brain injury, 99% of the time, not your fault. Right? Giving that 1% for people that genuinely went out to hurt themselves that day. And, and, and are the direct contributor to events that cause their event. That's another story, and, and that is not the purpose of this conversation. But it's not your fault that you've had bad days. Because I'm 19 months out. I no longer have the same number of bad days. I no longer have the same quality of bad days. I've learned to help anticipate what could be a bad day, I've learned strategies to mitigate what might be a bad day. The number of days I spend up in bed and, and relatively not getting out of it anytime soon. You know, um, I haven't had one of those in a couple of months. Uh, I've had rough days. Oh, yeah, I've had days that have been extremely difficult to deal with. Uh, and, and I've spent part of the day in bed. And part of that is... You have to give yourself permission to have a bad day, you know? So just accept the fact that everything that has happened to you, everything that's happened around you, not your fault. Just accept the fact that you owe yourself some validation. Like there's nothing wrong with you because of your stroke, your brain injury, your concussion. There is nothing wrong with how you interact with the world. It's, it's your new normal. It's going to be, it is what it is. And, and once you can kind of get to that point where you can 
not only accept, but embrace. Yeah, that, that's the word, embrace. Accept and embrace the fact that you owe yourself to be easy on yourself. You owe it to yourself to, to, to validate every little victory and celebrate every little victory, to validate and celebrate every large victory, right? And the days where you're not having so many victories that day, take a nap. It'll get better. I just can't tell you when, how, or where, but it'll get better. On that note, today's conversation about self-validation and, and, and self-compassion, uh, self here is over. Here endeth the lesson. And if you like what you've been watching over the last 19 months, please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone that's currently going through the throes of a post-stroke world, a post-brain injury world, point the channel up to them. They might get some benefit out of the content. If you know someone that is assisting someone and supporting someone going through a post-stroke world, uh, please like, share, subscribe with them. Again, they may get value out of the content. And if you happen to see someone who appears to be uh, immediately suffering from or, or having uh, a loss of balance, um, a loss of coordination, uh, they have, um, they're have they a bit confused, uh, someone who has vis pro eye problems or having problems with their vision, they can't see out of one eye, they can only see a little dot in the world, they see in grayscale, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction. If, you, if they have a um, noticeable drooping, slackening of the facial muscles, they can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. They can't smile equally effectively or at all. If slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language, and speech used for situation and context, have an inability to speak. Uh, someone who has a general body weakness, weakness on one side, or the inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.